Okay, so welcome back. Today, as I promised, we'll be discussing about a case study. Uh, this is not a real life case study. This is more of a tutorial case study. If you were to learn applying orthogonal array for a design perspective, as we have discussed, you are aware that you need to be able to repeat designs, different types of designs. The function should be the same. So, what might be a cost effective way to come up with the different designs? If I am giving you a product design, then there is some cost that is associated with it, even if you have to do 24 experiments. If you put a cost to each of the experiments, it is like 1000 rupees, still you will have to spend about 24,000 rupees to understand that part of it. Instead, this example is about a paper helicopter, but it is very interesting because there are few parameters in the helicopter that you can adjust and accordingly the response will change. So, the attributes or the factors will be the parameters. The response in our case is the flight time. I am going to run through this paper helicopter experiment using this particular paper. The author of this paper is Jiju Anthony and Frini Jiju Anthony. This came out in a journal called uh, Work Study. Yeah, so this came out in a journal called Work Study. in the year 2001. This is a fairly old paper, but however, it is a tutorial and it is applicable until orthogonal array lives and until we teach robust design, you can follow this paper because it is a tutorial and it holds good. So, we will see the organization of the uh, first, what is the title of this paper? It says, teaching the Taguchi method to industrial engineers. The paper is based on the premise that industry necessarily need to use Taguchi techniques to benefit. However, there is a resistance from the industrial engineers for using that. So, this will serve as a enabler for them to use the Taguchi techniques, so that they know the advantage. One of the basic arguments that the author presents is, the moment you start talking about statistics and probability, engineers are not very comfortable because that is not necessarily part of their engineering curriculum. Even in our case, I guess in one of your math course in the early semesters, you discuss a little bit about probability and statistics and that too predominantly your rolled die rolling and all that, is that right? some linear algebra course you are supposed to have a probability component also, not always they teach that. Okay. So, it is very interesting because this is a common course across different departments, computer science, mechanical, electrical, metallurgy for everyone. For some departments like computer science, the statistics and probability becomes very important even electrical, for that case any department, mechanical, electrical, statistics and probability becomes important in at least the third year. So, usually the students suffer without the underlying knowledge and as a result of it, we spend enough amount of time like anywhere between 2 to 3 weeks trying to explain the basic concepts and then take you through the concepts on uh, the application concepts. So, that is a, it is you know we are not alone, that is the only positive thing that we have in this, that is a good news that we have, we are not alone. That seems to be the case across the world, at least in 2000, that is what this paper says. So, you can, uh, you know, you can make a note of this paper and then um, it is it is free for download. If not, you can ask and I will tell you the, the, the link from where you can download and this is available and there are different. Uh, versions of this, whichever version you read is, is also fine. Okay. So, if you look at the introduction to begin with, it starts with uh, who Taguchi was and what he did. So, basically he promoted a philosophy and the methodology for continuous quality improvement. So, he talks about uh, the design of experiments, 
how it will use the de uh, industrial designers to manufacture products that are of both high quality and low cost. It is a combination, it is a conflicting objective if you see, it is a trade off always. So, this is a point that you need to, you are able to see the font right. His approach is primarily focused on eliminating the causes of poor quality on, on making product performance insensitive to variation. The point is we are talking about uh, insensitive variation which is the underlying idea for robustness. And then he talks about DOE being a powerful statistical techniques for identifying the optimal factor settings that is what he says here optimal factor settings and thereby achieving improved process performance. Then he kind of briefly introduces something that we have already discussed. Let us see what they are talking about. Use of orthogonal array to design to assign the factors chosen for the experiment L8, L16 he talks about. Then there is a little bit of literature that people uh, are discussing. Rowlands report success of Taguchi methods in different applications. If you see these are the different applications that the application of Taguchi method in the manufacturing and service industry is often applied incorrectly. Yeah, So, I can do it in the textbook and classroom example, but I am not comfortable and confident in applying the concepts at work. This is the basic motivation for this paper. So, we will give you a simple enough example that will have multiple factors and when you change those factors it will affect your response. How will you use design of experiment to choose a combination of these variables or factors? In a sense I will put a false cost to it, I will say each of your helicopter is going to cost about 10 lakh rupees. So, you want to build as many less helicopters as you want, always you can go and validate the original or the exact by building as many helicopters as you want. So, that is the basic idea for this one. Then this Anthony himself or herself have written lot of papers you know there is a series of papers that they have done. What they say is this these are the basic points that they believe why engineers are not able to engineers in the industry are not able to uh, are not willing to use not willing to use DOE as statistics. So, as I pointed out earlier he says uh, the word statistics invokes fear in many industrial engineers he talks about uh, the UK universities they leave the UK universities without a complete understanding of the power of statistics and therefore likely to avoid. So, the best place to learn is the best place to learn is your college ok. So, if you do not learn here it is very unlikely that you are going to learn things I mean of course, you go to a job you will have to find things to learn there, but something that you are expected to learn out of college you better learn here that that is what that first bullet means ok. No one is going to teach probability and statistics you will have to learn by yourself if you step out of the college without learning that. Sometimes uh, these graduating engineers are uh, exposed to techniques such as design of experiment, robust design etcetera, but that is just a part of it. Uh, engineers consistently, consistently avoid using these applied statistical techniques. Uh, for instance, if they use uh, there are uh, in the manufacturing industry they use something called the control charts the C P, C K ok. Uh, in those kind of situations what happens is they are only looking at the chart and uh, they might not have a in deep understanding of war or how it comes from, but they know how to use it. They will say the moment the chart crosses this line it means it cannot cross more than 3 times, if it crosses more than 3 times then there is some issue with the process. They might not know the underlying physics behind the C P, the C K curve and things like that. So, that is the, the last point ok. They might lack of a full understanding of the basic and the fundamental principles behind their application. So, th this is not something that he is claiming, but someone else have uh, written either part of a paper or a book he is just referring to that. And often times what happens is there are some textbooks and courses on design of experiment they, uh, they focus primarily on the statistical analysis of the problem under study. But this is only one component of the DOE ok, whereas you need to be able to do the planning, the design, the execution and inference that becomes very important. I just tell you this is the DOE, you use it, you get the responses, it is only one part of the game. How are you going to analyze? 
you have a set of responses, you do an SN ratio, you want to find an optimal combination. How do you ensure that it is an optimal combination? So, there are multiple questions that you need to be able to answer. So, these are the stuff. So, you can actually go through the paper for a better understanding. I will not be able to cover each and every sentence. But the interesting part of this paper is also it tells you why an orthogonal array based robust design driven quality for design or rather design for quality is an important stuff mainly from a cost perspective for any manufacturing company and they give you ample examples here. So, we will see for instance he says uh, the service industries do not report it and there are some reasons why he believe that they do not report it. However, there clearly are possible applications in the service sector reducing the time taken to response to customer compliance. Okay. Today, Six Sigma based ideas are not only for manufacturing industry within an organization within a large corporation even choosing a software there are multiple software for doing the same thing. Let us say that you want to do a structure analysis today right now if you ask me I can name about 10 softwares. How do you choose which software to invest in because this is a huge investment today these uh, company they these uh, licenses they do not come for free this is a huge investment. So, they want to decide which software to buy they are not going to go and ask the manager what software do you want. What they do is they have a systematic procedure it is a Six Sigma procedure wherein people are used to uh, people are asked to use this uh, different softwares and they will have to give their feedback on what features of what software is important and what features of what softwares are good and why they think why they believe that they need that. Then they will forecast their requirement for instance certain softwares are promoted for x application the software is good for y application that software is good we have this. Then they might be able to they should be able to forecast what type of clients or businesses they will get in the future and accordingly they will choose the software. So, that is one thing and the ease of use and a lot of things are there uh, the ability to incorporate new scripts into an existing code that could be one of them. So, based on all these things they rank the softwares and then they choose. So, the, the process in which this whole thing happens is a Six Sigma process. So, today it is not only so th that is what this paper is about like 17, 18 years ago right now predominantly in the service industry also people are using Six Sigma yeah. So, if you see here what he talks about is typical application in manufacturing they just give some examples where people have saved money. If you look at that someone has used an injection molding process what did they do high scrape rate due to excessive process variability. Since, there were a lot of process variability this is similar to our tile example the components that came out did not meet the specifications hence they had to be discarded. So, there was a high scrape rate how many experiment size did they use 8 trials only 8 different settings they tried of course, there is a cost involved in it because they might have tried different dives there is a significant investment in that, but they did only 8 trials and look at the benefits that they got annual savings were estimated to be over 40,000 euros this is way back about 18 years ago even today this is a significant amount. In a similar fashion you can see some wire bonding process the annual savings were about uh, 30,000. So, this is uh, biscuit excessive variability in the biscuit length this you cannot have because they need to be packed right. The biscuit need to uh, even today if you see these biscuits they are not necessarily of the same size there is always some tolerance if you see the biscuit packets are usually loose and if you actually arrange them they will look to be the same that is the way that they are arranged ok, but they are not of the same size always that could be because of this some process variability could be there and they have used only 16 trials here and then the biscuit length variability was reduced by over 25 percent ok. Interestingly what happens is there is no guarantee after all these trials that you will benefit in terms of cost, but for sure you will learn out of the process you will at least figure out that these are the factors that contribute and you cannot do anything about those factors that at least that learning will be there. So, this trials are the DOE that we talk about is a systematic scientific way to deal with those problems or rather address those problems not deal with those problems is to address those problems. You can always figure out that you cannot find a solution for that 
it will only take a shot at the problem. So, they gave this paper more from a design perspective. If you were to use design of experiments for a new product development, what are the different steps that you will follow? They discuss each step one by one. So, the step one is formulation of the problem, the problem statement. This is this is not specific to design of experiment if you think about it. This is what we teach in our functional conceptual design in our product design lab and all that. First is what is your problem statement? The question is not what your problem is. Your problem statement is different from your problem. First you need to know what your problem is, then you need to say what your problem statement is. You can say increasing the efficiency is my problem. How you are going to increase the problem, I, how you are going to increase the efficiency will be your problem statement under such and such conditions the efficiency was bad. So, the question is how are you going to increase the efficiency under such and such condition that is what is the problem statement. You cannot have a generic problem statement saying I want to increase the efficiency of the vehicle it is not like that. Under such and such conditions it did not behave as expected. So, we will have to look under this high temperature zones why it is not performing that well. So, that is the problem statement. So, formulation of the problem when we teach our optimization course and all that optimization formulation takes at least 2 to 3 classes that we teach that. Because that becomes if you are wise enough and you come up with a very good intelligent formulation your problem is solved in no time. Then you need to identify what is the output characteristic that is most relevant to your problem. If you take the same example of the efficiency you need not look at only the output efficiency. If your efficiency is connected to multiple components and you understand that the third or the fourth component is responsible majorly for the output, then you need to worry only about that particular component. So, you need to be able to say what is the output performance characteristic that is important to you. You should be able to answer that it is not necessarily the overall goal. I want to make my system efficient is a very generic statement if you look at it. So, you are not going to worry about uh, making all the components that comprises the system to be efficient. Maybe some of them are already efficient. So, as long as you get the two guys who are really inefficient to be able to perform efficiently then your system efficiency will go up. So, you will only focus on those two guys or those two components or those two modules or those two departments to function more efficiently that is the thing that they are talking about. Then you need to choose your factors. If you remember we talked about uh, two factors especially when we talked about uh, y f of x and x. So, in that x which is your input variables there are two types of uh, parameters that we talked about what are they. noise parameters key noise parameters and the other one are because what can you do with the noise parameters you might not be able to control them noise that is why they are called noise sorry no no that is more electrical principle <laughs> you cannot filter out noise you have to live with noise that is the idea behind robust design what is variation? Variation is noise. So, your design should be insensitive to that variation. So, the variation need to be there that is the that is the basic idea of and often times it is good to have the non-linearity. I should have discussed this in a different context, but we will we will we will do it here not a problem. So, we continuously keep talking about insensitive to variation right. Independent variable dependent variable this is your process. What do I mean as 
let us say that uh, this is the input that I am actually interested in. this is the output. However, the moment I say this particular x 1, it is not x 1, it is x 1 plus or minus, it can vary anywhere between this and this, the tolerance for instance. So, how can I represent that variability? Can use a distribution. So, the moment I say a distribution, my y also has a has a variability correct. This is what we are talking about. The moment your x has variability, your y is also going to have variability. The deal is can you identify one of the x's in this particular example where your output variability is going to be lesser compared to your input variability. You understand the question? So, we can go to another point, it should be a straight line. I am just marking let us say the fifth and the ninety fifth percentile. So, that is going to be the variability in my y axis. So, like that can you tell me in which x you might actually get a lesser variation than compared to your input variation. This curve is linear. You will not be able to because it will propagate the same nonlinearity from here to here. However, take this example for exam for instance. Which is the optimal point? If your optima is minimal, this point, but what is the problem with this design point? Sorry? It is not linear, eh? why should it be linear? That you do not have a choice, the function itself is non linear. So, for a small change in my x 1 plus or minus, there is a rapid change as he points out, okay. immediately it changes from here to here. What it says is, I design a vehicle, a motorbike. And then I have optimized it for some operation conditions. The moment the driver deviates a little bit from that, immediately the characteristics change. So, though this is an optimal design point, the output changes for a small variation in my input. This is not a robust design point. However, if you consider this point, which as per this axis is not optimal compared to this point because this is higher than this, this value is higher than this. However, at this particular point, at this particular point for a variation of x 2, is very small variation in my y, very small. Actually, I have drawn it with the variation. Practically, this variation is even lesser than this. You see that, you, you get the idea? Hence, in this particular graph, though this design could be heavier or relatively not as efficient as this design, it is a better design from a robustness perspective. 
because this is what I design it for, for a, for a larger variation also the output variation is less, I want that kind of a design. So, this is the idea of robustness from a in a pictorial sense, but why I discuss this now is it is not true that non-linearity is a bad trend because you can exploit non-linearity to find a spot where you can get a better robustness. In a linear thing you can never do that where whichever point you take in this they will all have the same the output will be the same propagated uncertainty you, you can really cannot choose in this. What can you do? You cannot do anything you have to go and address only the input unless you reduce this variability there is nothing that you can do about it. It becomes entirely your process capability whereas this is a design problem. There is some zone in my design space that I need to identify and then I will be able to quantify this. So, it is not true that nonlinearity is bad, nonlinearity actually gives you option alternate option. So, this is also a life principle if life is like a linear thing you know you are not excited you do not know what is happening next if there is a bad thing that is happening ok you just need to wait and work in the right direction you need to go in this direction and then you will find a better solution there. So, it is good that uh, and the other thing that I comes to my mind is your uh, ECG signal. Have you seen your ECG signals? How do they look like? What happens if your ECG signal is like this? There is no life. Unless your ECG signal is like this, PQRS, this is life. It should have peaks, it should have valleys. If it is like this, there is no life in that. So, whenever you find bad days in your life, ok do not think that the, that is the end please remember this example that is what is life is all about you will get a good day and that is what the design principle is also you will not get everything that you want you have two choices you will not get everything that you want here it is a trade off you go there life is all about trade off statistics can actually explain because everything in your life is about probability what is the guarantee that you will clear the course this time? It is only a probability if you attend the course if you regularly attend the course there is a larger probability that you will clear the course. Similarly, if you never attend the, the course it does not mean that you are going to fail the course there is a larger probability that you will fail the course. I need to look at how good your adaptability is to clear the course. So, it is all probability everything in life is probability there is nothing is certain in this life nothing is certain none of your lives are certain none of my life is certain and not my life is certain. If someone tells you like this is certain this is going to happen they are not telling you the truth ok let us not get philosophical ok. So, uh, uh, so the point that uh, I wanted to bring that is the reason I the wanted to bring that is uh, basic the basic idea is you need to have some idea about your nonlinearity of your design space to some extent ok. You should at least know whether it is linear it is nonlinear because depending on that is what you will have to choose your levels ok. So, if you remember what we discussed yesterday the workflow of the DOE you need to first tell what your problem statement is then you choose your control factors you actually choose your factors then you do a factor analysis and then you understand your control factors that is what they say identification of control factors then your noise factors. So, the noise factors is something that you have to live with control factor is something that you can change. So, if you remember if you appreciate in the discussion that we had right now the x itself can be considered as a control factor you can control where you want the x to be you understand that is a design variable, but the variability of x is not in your hand you understand that x is a variable it is going to be random can you control the variability no I cannot control the variability 
if you can control the variability you can get a beautiful design i'll tell you where let's say that for this this design is what you will get a large variation let's say that you had the capability to go and change this red curve into this curve you will get a very less variability very less variability you will get so in this particular design i have reduced my mu as well as my sigma the mu in terms of the x and also in terms of the y it's actually in terms of the y i have minimized both my mu and my sigma whereas if you take this guy it might have more or less the same sigma but the mu is larger so it could be a heavier design it need not be it could be less efficient than this but it's robust but here if you did have a chance to control this variability then this is a better design for you so in this example the choice of x is a design variable x is a design variable from that aspect so you can control what are the operating conditions you can say i am going to operate the machine in this but the variability in that operation is not in your hands so that part the variability is a noise and where i will run my operation is a controlled variable so the same variable could have two connotations that is what we are talking about here we are talking about control factors noise factors and signal factor signal factor is nothing but what mean noise factor is the variation of that value and what are the factors that you are able to control that's what this says control factors are those which can be controlled under normal production condition noise are those which are either too difficult or too expensive to control signal factors are those which affect the mean performance of the process these are stuff that we have already discussed after that the moment you select the factors you need to choose the factor levels this is where you need to know how your response behaves because if you believe your response is only linear then you need only two levels per factor if you believe that it is highly non linear how many points do you need how many levels do you need non linear 3 highly non linear 4 this is per variable that we have spoken about so you'll have to kind of adapt it across different dimensions so which means that you are going to get lot of points but you need to make those decisions once you do that this we have already discussed yesterday in detail orthogonal array choice of your orthogonal array how many this is the chicken and egg problem the orthogonal array is going to be dependent on the number of experiments that i can run the number of experiments that i'm going to be able to run is based on the my budget the other part of it is the number of experiments that i need to run is dependent on the number of factors that i have taken into account so based on this trade off you will have to decide what is the orthogonal array that is suitable for your particular study then you'll have to prepare the experiment of course then you need to choose or you need to decide upon how you are going to do what kind of a randomization procedure that's what this preparation of the experiment is then you run the experiment with appropriate data collection so you choose the orthogonal array for each setup you have generated your output sometimes you might want to repeat the each experimental setup that's what we saw because there could be variability within an experiment and there is obviously variability between the two experiments finally once you get the data you do statistical analysis in our case it's as simple as an sn ratio you do sn ratio and we will see today how and where you use the sn ratio to get a better design finally you will also have to validate your designs so your your simulation or your analysis is going to give you some combination that need not be one of the combinations that you have got then how will you make sure that that will give me my optimum response then you will have to go and do a verification study